All right. Uh, good evening. My name is Scott McCutcheon. I'm with Sovereign Studios. Um, today I wanted to uh, kind of show you um, a little thing I've been working on in Blueprints. This is a, uh, a, a character tool uh, that allows you to switch meshes uh, during gameplay. You know, skeletal meshes and kind of make kind of like a dynamic um, character swap system. Right, so I want to show you real quick how it works. Um, and you'll, uh, you'll notice here I've got a character kind of like that runs just kind of on the side scrolling template. Um, and you notice I have it with the uh, Xbox controller. If you hit the right shoulder button, the character pops and uh, disappears. You hit the shoulder button again, he'll swap to a a third uh, character um, and then again for the, the full out. Um, the cool thing is that I made this kind of on like a wheel, right? So um, think of it as like a, a wheel that you could turn right or you could turn left and it's got three points on the wheel. Um, so you could go right but you could also go left um, to swap back uh, to the original character. Um, so uh, basically, I'm going to show you guys how to how to do this swap uh, in Blueprints. So that's that's the plan. So let's uh, let's dig in. Um, <clears throat> okay, first things first. Uh, you'll see that I've created a Blueprint character class. Um, you can just come up here, go to uh, you know, create a new Blueprint, and you want to make it of type uh, you want it to derive from the character. Um, you know, so you'll just do that. Um, I've already created one, so I'm not going to go ahead and do all that. Uh, instead, I'm going to show you how to put the blueprint together. Um, okay, so you come over here into the event graph. Um, you notice I, I've got some other stuff set up for camera zooming, double jumps, uh, some of the attack stuff, and the movement in input, but what we're really going to concern ourselves with is, um, this series of nodes right here. So uh, we're gonna go and break this down um, and try and make this easy. Um, okay, so I guess we'll start at the beginning with the input actions. Um, you can see I have swapping the character right and swapping the character left. Okay, um, if you haven't really messed with input yet in Unreal Engine, uh, you're gonna do it up here in the project settings. Um, come down to uh, input and you'll see, um, you see all the all this good stuff right here. Um, for this particular one, you're going to want to map an axis, right? Um, and in my case, I have the character control and the camera control. Um, no, I'm sorry, that's not right. Action mappings. Uh, the two that we're looking at is um, swap character right and swap character left. Okay, so in this case, swap, swapping character right is going to be tagged uh, to the right shoulder button and tagged to the left shoulder button for swapping the character left. Um, and again, you, you have to kind of think about it like it's on a dial um, that can go either direction. You know, I'd like to put the dial in there as like a UI thing, but that, maybe that can come later. Um, once you've got your input set up uh, properly, you'll be able to drag these uh, input actions in here, which you can always just find um, when you do axis events, right? All these things and then you know, gamepad events and whatnot. Um, either way, okay, so swap character right. Uh, and then I have it tied to these these two functions. So depending on which one you press or which button you press, it's going to call this function first. Okay, so I created two new functions. Um, let's start with setting the hero to the right. Okay, in order to do this, you have to set a um, a variable, right, an integer value uh, that can kind of tell you uh, which mesh you're on, right. So we're going to have three meshes that you could swap. Um, and in this case, we're just going to have an integer value. So if the integer is value, value is one, 
it tells you which mesh you're on. So uh, basically what we do is we, uh, whenever it calls this function, we're going to create a branch um, and just test which, uh, which number we're on. Um, so come up here, add a new variable. Uh, in this case, I named my variable hero num to tell you which the number of the hero you're using or character mesh. Um, and I uh, set its default value to one, and then we'll just test. And basically, you go through uh, these branches. If it's true, you know we'll we'll change its number. Um, so basically, what's happening? Uh, here is it is it tests to see if it's uh, if your hero number is one if your hero number is one it increments it um, changes the number to two if it's two changes it to three if it's three it'll reset it back to one um, so it basically just checks that um, and then you pretty much do the same thing um, for setting the the hero to the left. Um, you um you check you just test the hero number and instead of incrementing you um decrement is that a word I don't know um either way so if it's one it turns it back to three if it's two it turns it back to one and if it's three it'll set it back to two um so those are your two um those are your two functions those that's what actually just changes the number uh, and lets you let you know. Okay, so that right there is your your swap controls. Okay, um, no, basically all that does is, is change that integer value. Uh, it doesn't do anything else. Um, just changes the integer value every time you hit the button. Okay. Um, so the next thing uh, that I do is both of these nodes obviously tie into this same node once it's done. No matter what, it's going to run the rest of this this whole function here. Um, you know, it's going to run all this nonsense. Um, let me go ahead and move this out a little bit so I can get a little more space. Um, <clears throat> okay, so you guys got the functions functions down. We just went over that. Um, and now we're going to look at this uh, character swap initialization. Okay. Um, okay, so the very first thing I, I, that you want to do is uh, you want to disable input. The reason you're disabling all input is um, is because what's happening is that um, in this particular instance, instead of just swapping the character's mesh, I'm actually swapping the entire character class. Uh, in this case, uh, in, in, well, the reason I'm doing that is because each character class may end up with... Uh, you know, uh, different abilities, right? So, you know, they, they basically have a different blueprint um, that allows them to do different things. Uh, so I, I'm swapping up the actual character's class instead of just its mesh. Um, because of that, uh, you know, a lot of the input is tied to um, the character's class, obviously. You know, so one class may have input, fu input features that uh, another class does not. Um, so I don't want you to be able to do anything while it's switching characters, right? So I quickly disable the input. All this happens really quickly. Uh, by the time I disable it, swap the meshes, or swap the class and the mesh, and then re-enable input. Um, unfortunately, and there's got to be a, a better way to do this. Um, you know, so... Because uh, it is noticeable in-game. It's not very fluid. Uh, you can kind of... You get this little stagger. But either way, um, disabling input. Um, <clears throat> so I want to I want to do that for the player controller, obviously. Um, and then just as like a little bit of flair, I uh, I want to spawn an emitter at the location um, of the mesh. So I just uh, what I do is I get the player character, I grab its transform, and I take its location and its rotation and spawn the emitter there. Um, in this case, you know, I just picked, uh, you know, one of the uh, example content explosions, uh, P explosion, and it works just fine. Um, I also tick on auto destroy. Uh, that way, you know, the particle system, whenever it's complete, will uh, 
destroy itself, obviously. Um, and then the last thing I, I do is I is I toggle the visibility of the mesh. Um, in this case, it turns it off. Okay, so it, it turns off the ability to see the mesh as soon as it uh, spawns that particle effect. Um, so, um, I'll just show it to you again real quick. Um, you hit the button, you see that explosion, you see the mesh disappears as part of the explosion, right? And then reappears uh, as a different mesh. Um, <clears throat> so, oh, I don't want to mess with that. Um, okay, so we're turning off the mesh, we're responding in emitter, we're turning off the mesh. Okay, and then now we get to the fun stuff. Um, Let me kind of get through here. Okay, so the um, the next portion that we're going to do is we're going to run a test. Um, we're going to run a test to find out which mesh you're on, right? Um, so in this case, we're going to determine the current mesh and then branch accordingly. Um, all this does is it's going to take that hero number integer that we set up earlier and check. Just like it did uh, in our functions, right uh, back here. So, if it's a one, you know, if it's a two, or if it's a three. Um, so basically, you'll see this is where we set our new and class. Okay, because. Um, you know, obviously the meshes have different skeletons and therefore different animations. Um, you know, and, and it's basically you're swapping to an entirely different player class or character class. Um, okay, so essentially what happens is you check for uh, the mesh number, right? So if you're on mesh one, um, you're going to go true. In which case, um, you know that you're going to want to swap it to the to the next character. Um, so, if the number's a 1, you can come over here, and this is where we set the skeletal mesh. Um, and then we also change its uh, anim instance, right? Um, you know, it needs a new anim class. So, and then you basically do the same thing uh, for the rest of the uh, numbers, right? So if you're on two uh, and it's true, you'll branch over and set a new skeletal mesh and set that mesh as anim instance. Um, and you basically do that again for the third one. Theoretically, you could do this for as many as you want. You just have to, you know, change your functions and add in more hero numbers. Um, Um, okay, and then, so at that point, you've swapped out, um, your mesh, right? <clears throat> uh, we spawn the emitter, we turn off the visibility of the mesh, we do the test to see which mesh we're on, and then, um, and then we, based on which mesh we're on, we swap to a new one, okay? Um... Now that we've swapped to a new mesh, um, we have to respawn, turn everything, turn everything back on, make it visible again, right? So this is the last, uh, the last part of the, the function. Okay. So what we do is all three of these uh, will feed back into this delay. Okay. And this is a really short delay. Um, this is mostly just to kind of give the illusion of, uh, you know, disappearing and reappearing, making it happen a little bit, um, 
more naturally, I suppose. Um, but also to give it time just to, you know, kind of do its thing. Um, either way, so um, what happens is uh, we make the delay, uh, and, and I have it set to 0.6 seconds. Um, but you can make it whatever you want to. Uh, and then I spawn another emitter, same deal, where, you know, I, I got um, the player character, pulled its transform, and uh, spawned the emitter at its, at its new location. Um, and then you simply target, uh, toggle visibility back on, um, and then re-enable input. And at that point, you're done. Um, so that whole little system basically comes up to give you, um, you know, this good stuff. But, uh, yeah, you'll see how, like, uh, when you're in the, or when you're running, and I disable input, obviously it stops his moving, um, unless you're in the air. I don't know. Um, could work out a little bit better. But, um, Right. Um, yeah. Anyway, so that's how that worked. Um, I am Scott with Sovereign Studios, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Sovereigns, uh, or visit my website at Sovereigns.com. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, I'm always around and available. So enjoy and best of luck building, making something unreal. <laughs>